G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, it's Sunday sort of lunchtime here in Australia, so, you know, very early Sunday morning over in the States. And we can see an interesting story here that there's a, actually a CME gap just above where we are that hasn't been closed since way back in sort of 2017, 2018. And most of the time when we think about CME gaps are always below and we always get worried about them. Well, now there's actually one that's above us that would be bullish if we closed it. So we can see here, impending CME gap close, uh, close could propel Bitcoin to 18,000. Now, we'll get to the Bitcoin price lately. I think 18,000, yeah, I'm not sure that's going to happen you know, in the next sort of 24 hours anyway. I could be wrong. We've got to wait for Monday to really see what kind of happens. Monday morning when the CME opens and all the rest of it. Uh, and, you know, regular uh, investment channels open because they close down for weekends. Look, we could push to 18,000. Uh, and I definitely think we're going to close that in sort of the next two weeks. Just not sure if it's going to happen, you know, in the next sort of 24 to 48 hours. We'll have to wait and see though. But we go down here and it says... A CME gap in the 16,465 uh, to 16,570 zone uh, and a growing number of analysts, analysts expect the price to break above the $17,200 level if the CME gap is closed. This is what I'm thinking as well. I think if we can sort of get above you know, this $16,500 mark, we're going to jump up to the $17,000 mark. I don't think we'll go straight through to 18000 uh, it, it's possible. Uh, I'm just not sure it's going to happen. I think we will definitely cover that off probably later in the week. I think, you know, like next sort of Friday-ish, I expect us to be up around 17.5, uh, 17.7. Uh, again, we can wick higher. I just think we're going to keep slowly but surely kind of you know, moving upwards. I don't think we're going to see any real explosive moves until we get closer to that 20,000. But I mean, at the moment, Bitcoin is moving pretty well. Uh, again, not that rapid, crazy growth. When it starts to do that rapid, crazy growth where it's jumping up thousands of dollars day after day, that's generally the kind of the peak mania phase. And that may be, not financial advice, just my personal opinion, that may be time to start selling some stuff. If you're going to sell, if you're just simply hodling for the long term, you know, that's not a bad strategy. It's not the best strategy, uh, but it's not a bad strategy. And again, personal opinion, not financial advice. I think, you know, once you understand the cycles, when you feel like things are just getting crazy, and again, Bitcoin and all the cryptocurrencies, they're just, they're near, you know, I don't know if Bitcoin will be doubling uh, in the crazy stage anymore. It, it could be, we'll have to wait and see. But when your altcoins, they just, you know, they've gone up, you know, sort of 5x uh, to maybe 10x, you know, in the last week, uh, and everything else is, again, doing, you know, something similar, that's usually the mania uh, phase where everyone's just getting crazy. For me, that's uh, the time where I will have, I'll have already started to scale out once I reach certain points. Uh, you know, certain price targets with some of them, but I'll be holding on to uh, some of them for when I see that crazy stuff going on. Again, selling 10% maybe every couple of days when you see stuff like that happening, or more or less, or whatever it is you wanna do. But that's what I'm looking out for. And again, back to Bitcoin, I think 17,200 uh, is really where I'm kind of looking at as well. Uh, around, you know, just under 18,000, but I think, end of uh, this week coming, sort of Friday, I think, I think we're going to be around that $18,000 mark and we could be even higher. Look, it's possible we really get up close to that 20000 maybe hit it uh, and reject off it and come back down to sort of these prices. We'll just have to wait and see. It's very hard to know, but we'll get onto that a little bit later. So CME gap, and it's actually above where we are. Uh, instead of below and that's what we're generally all worried about that we're going to retrace to the CME gap that's below we've actually got one just above us uh, that we're probably more likely to close than to start to close the ones below us but who knows right Belarus so their largest bank over in Belarus uh, they've got a cryptocurrency exchange so the largest bank in Belarus, uh, Belarus Bank, has reportedly begun providing a cryptocurrency exchange service. So they're already getting their citizens into cryptocurrencies now. 
this is just the beginning you know mass uh, adoption is coming whether we get the you know worldwide mass adoption uh, in this bull run so really again that's within the next sort of 12 to maybe 18 months not entirely sure uh, you know a lot of the banks uh, around the world you know they've got the licenses to and that but they haven't still actually started doing it so it may not be this bull run uh, it may be the next one but look this bull run may stretch out a lot longer because of this because the banks and that really won't get started until next year and you know next year september sort of december ish is you know if we go off previous history is likely to be the kind of cycle peak somewhere around about there because the banks and everything are still you know building their platforms and they still haven't got everyone on board yet it may see a mad run that you know lasts well past december next year maybe you know we push into uh the second half of uh, sorry the first half of 2022 before we see the cycle peak it's just hard to know but this is very promising news Belarus's uh, new cryptocurrency exchange service is in collaboration with Bitcoin exchange service provider Whitebird, several local news outlets reported on Thursday. The bank revealed its plan to create a cryptocurrency exchange platform early last year. So they were talking about it last year, they finally got onto it, uh, and yeah, good news for people in Belarus, uh, the mainstream adoption is happening for them. We don't have anything like this happening in Australia at the moment, which is a little bit sad. We still have cryptocurrency exchanges and I use uh, CoinSpot. There's a link down below for any Australian people who want to get uh, involved in CoinSpot. I really, really like them. But none of our banks are custodying at the moment. So we're still waiting to see that kind of regulation here in Australia. All right. Bitcoin Cash to undergo a hard fork tomorrow. So I think that was... Uh, yeah, 15th of November. No, that's today. So I guess it's tomorrow, Monday. There we go. You know, I really liked Bitcoin Cash and I liked their whole ethos and everything that they were about. But yeah, they, they just have failed to live up to the hype and really, uh, again, another hard fork. You know, Satoshi, Satoshi Vision was a hard fork of these guys. Now there's another one coming. I don't even know what it's going to be called yet. I really think Bitcoin Cash is dead and I just, I don't see it doing anything in the future uh yeah very sad for a, a a project that sounded promising and i like roger ver and look he's invested in so many other cryptocurrencies it's not money from the money uh it's not funny from the money that he made when he originally uh did the hard fork with bitcoin cash so he's more than well off if bitcoin cash were to fail uh, it's not really going to affect him too much he really has uh been a a venture capitalist uh investor uh, in early in a, in a number of projects, so he's uh, doing quite well. Now, G Digital Galaxy uh, acquires two crypto firms and sees big wave of institutional uh, demand for Bitcoin. So yeah, the institutional demand is happening. It hasn't really got to the crazy phase yet. It's still the very early, you know, what are going to be considered the early adopters uh, in the institutional wave. They're still it's building and that's why the bitcoin price just continues to push up and there hasn't been any major retracements and i don't see any major retracements coming for some time i've said that i don't think we'll see any kind of 20 30 40 percent uh retracements from bitcoin until we hit i don't know 25 to 35 thousand us dollars and look it may even be much later after that it might not be till the 50 uh you know sixty thousand dollar mark or something like that it's going to be all these big companies that got in nice and early uh, and they have tripled or quadrupled their money you know whatever it may be and then they're like all right well you know we're going to start to take some profits here uh, and again that they then believe when they're selling uh, is going to be higher than the next uh, cycle low so they can buy in again in the future that's my prediction but you know digital galaxy they're obviously uh, super bullish at the moment uh, buying up two crypto firms paypal's done exactly the same they're looking to buy up uh, other crypto uh, i think exchanges and things like that it is coming things are going to get very very crazy once we get over that twenty thousand dollar mark it's going to get real crazy you know the the other institutions that haven't got in yet that again really won't be considered the true early adopters once they see that it's over twenty thousand, it's just that human psychology they're going to go this is happening it's mooning and it's been mooning for a long time already 
And so they jump in, pushes the price higher, and then you know the real late uh, institutions jump in, and then you know the retail FOMO starts, and that's what's really going to push things high. Uh, and we're going to see some truly crazy prices. And you know, the more I hear about things like this, the more I think this could be a super cycle, something that's just going to go way beyond what people are expecting. Again, uh, Plan B says you know two hundred eighty-eight thousand. You know, if we really get mass adoption uh, and then the retail FOMO, you know, after all the institutional FOMO that'll happen, yeah, we could see Bitcoin just do something that none of us can truly wrap our heads around. You know, time will tell, could be completely wrong and maybe it'll just uh, stay the course and that every, uh, you know, high gets smaller and smaller. But you gotta remember the highs that happened before, it was easier to push the price because there was less Bitcoin available back then. So, uh, sorry, there was, yeah, less of a Bitcoin available because it still hadn't been mined. So, you know, someone who came in with a couple of million dollars could really push the price up now. Uh, there's more Bitcoin available, but we're getting closer to the end of what's being available, but the big money is starting to flood in. So we could see some really, really, really massive price swings uh, in the, this coming bull run yeah, you know it, not financial advice again personal opinion uh, nothing more it's just the feeling that I get from watching and you know more so reading all these stories and hearing about the institutional demand that's coming and once the institutional demand comes and they're gonna have got their stack they're gonna sell to retail and they're gonna really start to FOMO and again when someone hears Bitcoin went from 4,000 and now it's worth 25,000 and, or you know 40,000 this is gonna go to a million and so they're gonna jump in and that'll push it higher and look you know maybe a million dollars is going to happen uh, in this bull run I think that's highly unlikely please don't think that's what I think is going to happen I definitely uh, think it could go to you know yeah it's hard to say I think a million dollars in 10 years time uh, is well within our reach uh, it could be a whole lot more. I'm just not sure a million dollars would happen in this cycle, but it's not out of the realms. If things get really, really crazy, high net worth individuals, you know, big institutions want to start buying it up, yeah, it could go that high. I think, although I think it's unlikely. My prediction is the lowest high point that we can have is around 75 to 85,000. I think Bitcoin easily does that. Uh, after that, uh, it's hard to say. I think 100, 150 uh, is within reason. The 288,000 uh, possible, but again, it'd have to be, you know, things get pretty crazy and anything after that kind of 250, 288,000, that is just when, you know, it, it really has become a super cycle and things have gotten really, really crazy and people have just started to pile in. All right, incoming Senator hopes to bring Bitcoin to the national conversation. So we've got a senator over in the States. In an interview with the ABC News program, GMA3, what, uh, what you need to know on Friday, Senator-elect Cynthia Loomis again voiced her support for the popularization of Bitcoin, going so far as to say that she hopes, uh, she does hope to bring Bitcoin to the national conversation. And look, that's what we need, you know, some senators, you know, we've got some, uh, celebrities out there that are starting to talk about it a lot more uh, pre than what was happened previously. Uh, and then senators start to talk about it. And then, you know, really big politicians, you know, uh, particularly like, you know, presidents and prime ministers and things like that. That is where things are, you know, once that starts to happen, things are going to happen fast and they're going to really move. You know, the day that a, a US president or a uh, UK Prime Minister or something like that comes out and says, yeah, uh, Bitcoin is now going to be part of our treasury and we're investing in it and we're you know, going to offer it. Uh, we're going to use it to help uh, fund our you know, nation's uh, projects and things like that. The minute something like that happens, it is going to absolutely explode. You know, that may not happen this bull cycle. It may be the one coming after that or look, it may be even further away than that but that's when things will get really crazy because the public will be like, okay, this is now legit. You know, our president's talking about it or our prime minister's talking about it. Uh, and it's part of, uh, you know, the whole country, the whole nation's investment strategy. 
yeah, things will move very, very fast the day something like that, that happens. And it's that old saying, no one wants to be first, so no president wants to come out and be the you know president, prime minister, whatever it is, to come out and say, yep, our country has adopted Bitcoin and you know blah blah blah. Uh, in case of you know, because they're just worried that oh god, what happens if it fails and I'll look like the silly one. But once one does it, it's that whole herd mentality. You watch a second prime minister, president do it, and then a third and a fourth, and then all of a sudden. They're all doing it and no one will want to be the last one. And it's more so if a really big country does it. If some small random country does it, and look, they're more likely to be one of the first ones to do it, the rest will start to follow because they just won't want to be the last. And again, they don't want to be the first in case they're wrong. But it's that, yeah, herd mentality. Once the first one does it, there's likely a second. And particularly once there's two, three, four or five that have done it, then they all will do it. That is just the way human psychology works. All right, let's go over to CoinGecko. So we'll give this a quick refresh. 366 billion. And we can see that it's down a little bit. This is just the weekend retracement. This is not uh, unusual. Uh, you know, most weekends this happen. There's a few that it doesn't, but most of the time there's a retracement. And we can see over the 24 hours, 1.3% we're down. It's, you know, down under 16,000 at the moment. Uh, and I think it could go a little bit lower, but I don't think it's going to dip too much lower. I think this is just the you know, typical weekend retracement that happens uh, and come Monday morning, things are going to start to move back up again. Unless, excuse me, this randomly spikes up to 17,000 today, uh, it's quite possible that it drops back down to 16,000 Monday morning. But again, I think this will just hover around this area. We could go lower, 15.8, 15.7, maybe even 15.5. Look, who knows? Uh, although I think this is kind of going to be close to the bottom and come Monday morning we're just going to continue to you know push higher gas fees how good is that 12 that is brilliant we need to get down to single digits uh, ETH is really starting to find its foothold uh, you know and the ETH 2.0 and a lot of things moving on to layer 2 solutions this is great I am super bullish on ETH and look, 200, oh, sorry, 450, nearly 460,000. This was up around 400, uh, not thousand, 450 dollars. This was up around 470. Ethereum, it is just really starting to cook. I am super bullish on Ethereum. I think Ethereum is going to outperform Bitcoin uh, this cycle. I mean, look, a lot of things will outperform Bitcoin, and that's no shade on Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the least volatile. Uh, of the cryptocurrencies uh, still highly volatile don't get me wrong but it is the more stable one and it's becoming more and more stable as it gets older and older and that's generally what happens to uh, investment categories and things like that new disruptive technologies at first the big money is generally in really really early or when it you know just as it starts to reach before it reaches that mainstream adoption so why there's plenty of upside for it uh, and then it will just start to level out and you know act like traditional stocks. Ethereum is still early. I think, uh, what was it, 2014, 2015, it was released, so it's still in its early, early stages. I think this is going to pump massively. You know, I've seen videos, people talking about it, anywhere from five up to $30,000 Ethereum. It wouldn't surprise me. It really would not surprise me. I think the 30,000 is probably you know, stretching it. Again, I wouldn't say it's impossible. I'm thinking Ethereum is probably going to be more around... Oh, look, again, it's it's more a guess than anything because who knows, but I would say maybe six to $8,000 uh, is where I sort of see Ethereum going. Could be a little bit higher, higher, maybe sort of 10 to 12, but I'm, I'm thinking six to eight is probably going to be the high for the cycle peak. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, I am getting ready to stake some Ethereum though. Uh, just waiting to find some good information on it and exactly how to do it. Uh, thinking about Rocket Pool uh, as they will do it for you, but I don't like the idea of putting too much, uh, you know, of my cryptocurrencies into other people's hands. But look, something I'm looking at. All right, BTC dominance. So again, down, not quite at the 64%. Uh, that may change come Monday. We'll have to wait and see. Now, big winners. Whew. Thorchain, nice. This one's got me stumped. I thought sushi was dead, but have a look at that. Yeah. Look, I don't know enough about sushi. I know uh, it was really big for a minute, 
Then there was all this kerfuffle about it. Uh, and now it seems to be coming back. I still uh, have zero intention of buying any sushi. But look, if you're owning it, uh, 84% is nearly doubled its price in seven days. So pretty, uh, pretty nice. Ave, I do have uh, a stack of Ave. Not a stack, uh, you know. A position in Ave. I don't. Uh, <laughs> I don't really consider myself to have a stack of anything. But fifty three percent over the last seven days. Uh, pretty happy with that, you know. And it's starting to get back to you know its old peak highs. We can see here. I mean, this is over seven days. But you know, a lot of the DeFi projects all took a tumble, making its way back. Uniswap, likewise, uh, got myself a bag of Uniswap, and it's finally uh, back in the green i bought it and it just continued to go down and down and down and it was near 30 40 percent down uh and finally uh it's in the green only literally by i think maybe three percent or four percent from my buying price uh, i'm pretty sure i was buying it at like you know three dollars 79 or three dollars 80 or something like that so uh glad to see it's back synthetics network again uh finally you know pushing its way back up uh happy with that and look uh, Yearn Finance, again, uh, 25%. Uh, I cannot believe this was like $9,800, you know, a week ago. So that is what cryptocurrencies can do. And finally, XRP, 27 cents. Get up, you good thing. <laughs> XRP, uh, you know, it's generally the last to move, but it pumps the hardest. And at least it's finally getting some some movement you know people are starting to get in uh, really happy with that uh, 10% and the funny thing is you know XRP only needs to move a cent and that's uh, about a 10% uh, sort of gain so yeah really happy with that uh, I haven't got the XRP charts up at the moment I might do that tomorrow we'll have to have a look uh, and see where our next sort of price target is but again I'd be looking for sort of 50 cents really uh, thereabouts but they're the movers so nothing too major really except for up here and then it's just single digit uh, gains for 24 hours and again it is the weekend but we can see there's some red here now there are some losers though unfortunately it's always the way our uh, reserve token again down but look it's had a great week energy web token uh, down uh, has not been doing well for the last seven days that's the way it happens block stack same thing look single digits it pumped nearly 50 percent in seven days so a retracement is to be expected and then we can just see they're really well all of them they're just low sort of single digit uh retracements so that's a typical weekend for cryptocurrencies you know sometimes it happens thursday night sometimes it happens friday saturday or sunday sometimes even sort of uh, monday morning uh before the markets open uh, there's some kind of retracement. Not always, but just generally. All right, last but not least, let's get over and have a look at the Bitcoin charts. As we can see, I did say the other day that you know we'd broken out of this triangle, and I said it's quite possible because it's the weekend, we come back uh, and bounce off this. And hey presto, look what it's done. It is almost bounced off it perfectly. Now again, it is possible that we maybe even come down to this sort of $15,000, sort of $800 level. It, it, possible. I just don't think it's likely. I think we've kind of found the bottom and we're going to sit around here and again, maybe we come down in, in here and do the 15.8, 15.9 kind of range. But I think tomorrow morning, and again, that's here. I did say that, you know, the 16th of November, we're going to know one way or the other. So we've pumped out to the top. We've come back down and currently we are retesting this. So what was once resistance now becomes support. Textbook, uh, you know, flip of uh, resistance and support. What was resistance becomes support. This could break though and it could fall down to here, but it's more where about it closes than really where it might wick down to. As long as the close stays above here, this is just a, exactly that, a resistance support flip. So we're waiting to see what happens. All right, I'm not going to take up any more of your time. Let me know uh, down in the comments below. Do you think we're going to come down and test this kind of $15,800 level? Or do you think at the kind of the point where we are now, which is more 16,000, uh, you know, 100 ish to sort of 15,900 ish is the bottom? Uh, and then we're all only going to go further up from here. Hit that like button down below, helps my videos get seen. I really appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button, I do daily content. And yeah, stay safe.
be kind to one another. Hopefully we're on that game train. Look, Bitcoin's down a bit, but that's just the way it is. Other things are up. And I'll see you next time.